I this is the first year I've given retakes. I don't usually give them. And so if you're depending upon them, it's time to start letting that go. Um, even for pre-calcs, they're talking about, you know, only one pre-take, one retake or two retakes for the year next year. Because you should not be, so we've got to start getting you ready for that. Where you are not depending upon a retake for your grade. You're too smart to be doing all these retakes. Retakes were designed for people who were failing a class to get to the point that they were passing. That is not you. You are too smart. You know how to study. You, we go over the review. You ask good questions. You're good students. So let's doing our very do our very best at the beginning instead of backtracking. Jenna, let's check our homework. Okay, number two. Here you can see I ran synthetic division to get my second factor. Make sure you pulled out that negative. <coughs> Bless you. Zach, check your homework. And six. Yeah, let's check them first. <laughs> We're not even there yet. Okay, number three. And then after number three, we crossed off the local min, local max, increasing, decreasing. So as long as you're okay with those, I do have the answer to them if you ran others. But if you are feeling okay with them, you are not required to do the mins and maxes and the, uh, the increasing, decreasing. There we go. Let me check it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Okay, the next one, again, you did not have to do the increasing, decreasing, mins and maxes. Different classes had different ones crossed off. Sorry. Yes. So there'll be like, you know, 80, 85% of it will be no calculator and then like a front back with calculator. Yes. Yes. And then like there, that's where you would see like your local mains, local maxes, increasing, decreasing, that kind of stuff with a calculator. Yep. So you have a pretty good idea what would have a calculator. Um, and then, of course, number five, um, which I said was sort of the beast here, number five for me was completely calculator. So that one, I could not find the zeros without a calculator, and I couldn't factor it. So this would be a good question for me just to give you the calculator and see if you could find the x-intercepts still without a calculator, or sorry, with a calculator. So to me, this is a complete calculator question. So that would be, since he just brought up the calculator, and no calculator portion. This for me would be complete calculator. And then I put a little note here that said, you know, the graph is here if you want to use it, but it will not be graded. So for me, this is not a gradable graph because all I did was copy it off my calculator. Go ahead. They're gradable, and most of them, especially if I um, did not do increasing and decreasing and bins and maxes, um, I would not let you use the calculator. Um, I would, like he said, I would tell you that like one of the solutions would be one, and then you could find the rest of them using synthetic division. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or they, like they would be factorable. So like for example, um, like this one, I could have told you that one of the answers was three, and then you could have run or for the next one. Hold on, let me slide it up so you can see what I'm talking about. I could have said that maybe this one had an answer of three. I might not tell you it's a double root. That would be really sneaky, though. Maybe I told you that three was a double root, so that you could take three out twice, because it's not factorable. Um, yep, it's not factorable. And then you could have run synthetic division and pulled the two threes out to get the last factor, 2x plus 3. So you could have done all of that work without a calculator. Does that make sense? And then you could have graphed it without a calculator. You could have found everything there without a calculator. Um, no max, no mins, no increasing, no decreasing. Because all of that you would need a calculator for. But I got to give you something, unless it's factorable. So if I give you nothing, you have to go, this factors. She has to give me something or it factors. And that sort of shows you how much we've been working on factoring for units now. Units upon units upon units we've been factoring because that's all we have. So if I give you nothing, it has to factor. And truly, your last couple quizzes have had so much factoring on them, bless you, that I feel really good about unit two, which was our toughest unit, the worst grades. Okay, that's the one unit that I'm like, okay, you could have taken a retake on unit two. The rest of them, no. Because unit two is always the hardest every year. 31 years of teaching, unit two is always the hardest. But by now, you can factor. So it's not all you. It just comes with the course. 
That's kind of why I came back to teach algebra two after teaching calculus for so many years. It's because I want you to be able to factor because you're going to need it for your future. Okay? So I think that answer is five, total calculator. That's why I was like, five is not such a big deal. Okay, what else from here? And I think you got good clarity on, like this is a fantastic question. You know, like I said, I give you an answer. I tell you that negative one is one of the x-intercepts. And then away you go. Or I give you, you know, then you can run synthetic division or you can factor it or whatever. It's really putting it all together. <coughs> Anything on 4, 5 or 4, 6, whatever this is. 4, 6. Go ahead. So the four, 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 four. Okay. So for this one, if I can't factor it, in this case, I would have had to use my calculator. So it could be a calculator question, and then you have to find your answers. Or I have to give you something. If I don't give you a calculator, then I have to say something here works. So if it's a cubic problem, I have to give you at least one to get you down to a quadratic, and then you've got a wheelhouse of things you could do. You could then run quadratic formula, factor, complete the square, or square root method. But I got to get you down to something that you can then do. Okay. But I can't give you nothing and no calculator. That's just, I can't even do that. So there's no way I can do that to you. That's just not possible. Even with higher level math, I got to give you something. Okay. Okay, let's start with your review then. Let's check what was due today, and then we're going to finish the review in class and check it. If some of you have already worked ahead, that's great. I have um, other things for you to do while everybody else kind of gets to that same point. I have another review for us to work on. Again, the more we prep for the test, okay, we had like 1 through 20, I feel like, 1 through 12, here it is, 15 and 16, and then 19 through 38. So clearly I have work for this. There's no way that I can just throw those answers up there. Yours looks a little bit different. They're this way. Same problems. I just typed yours up a little nicer and neater, but same idea. And so these are the kinds of questions, again, I either have to, they either have to factor, I have to give you an answer, or I got to give you a calculator. Just depends upon what's going to happen. But I do like now that I'm not, even on the quizzes, I'm not getting prime. I'm not getting no solution, because you know that there are solutions. So let's check the first page and then I'll come back and take any questions off the first page for you. So we'll go ahead and check 1 through 12 and then I'll do anything that you want. Okay, so 5 and 6. This actually said write it in integral factored form. I changed the directions. So you would want that answer. x plus 4, x minus 3, x squared plus 4. I think you had one on your quiz that was in standard form. So perhaps you'll see one that you have to multiply together, but not this big. And then for number six, we had this first answer because you had it in integral factored form. 
So make sure it's equal to something, because remember we lose a point there. X, X minus one squared, and then X squared minus four X plus 13. Go ahead, Tucker. Can you talk about how that was two plus three I, like the factors Yes, so here you know that you have both of them. So I took X equal to plus and minus two I. I know that there's two of them, so I squared both sides. So if I square both sides, I get x squared is equal to, plus and minus will be positive. I get 4i squared. i squared is negative 1. So x squared is equal to negative 4, and I added 4. And right there it is. Oh, I did the same exact thing. I took x equal to 2 plus and minus 3i. I added 2 to the other side. Oh, sorry, subtracted 2 to the other side. I'm going to square both sides. This side I have to actually FOIL out. So I got x squared minus 4x plus 4 when I FOIL equals 9i squared. And that's really a negative 9. And so I'm going to add it to the other side. And I got x squared minus 4x plus 13. And there's my factor. And I feel absolutely no need. As a matter of fact, I would love to just make that go away. I feel no need to multiply it together. No need to multiply it together. Because if you multiply it together, and it say, says integral factored form, as you saw on the quiz, if you put a box around the wrong part, I marked it wrong because that means you don't know the vocabulary. It's not like I can be like, oh, look, the work is up here. Oh, look, you know what you're doing. Well, you don't know the vocabulary. You're too smart for that. So I'm just gonna make that standard form just disappear. Clearly, I changed the directions when I revamped yours because we do everything in integral factor form now. Okay, 7 through 10. Again, yours are going across the paper. A little saving of the paper there, but same idea. Write it in standard form, state the degree and the leading coefficient. So... Number seven is a polynomial. It's degree zero. The leading coefficient is 11. Nine is not, or sorry, eight is not. It is a polynomial function, sorry. I put it in standard form. It's degree three. There's where you get the bonus points when I ask the degree. And the leading coefficient is negative square root of three. Nine is not, so I did nothing. That's what I want to do so bad. No, nine, no. 10 is, I put it in standard form, degree four, there's my bonus point, leading coefficient five. And then you can see your answers for 11 and 12. I feel like you all kind of rock and behavior. There should be some easy points for you. Okay, anything else on the first page that you want to do? Go ahead, Taylor. No. Number eight. Okay, so it is a polynomial function because all the powers that are on the x's are whole numbers. So this one would really have an x to the zero. This was have an x cubed, and this is an x to the first. So it is a polynomial. So technically, I could write negative six x to the zero here, so that's a whole number, whole number, whole number, just the, the powers. So if I put it in standard form, the cube would come first, then the degree one, then the degree zero. Is that okay with you? If something there's freaking you out. So it's degree three is the highest, it's cubic, and the number out front is negative square roots of three. Okay. What else? Are a couple hands, go ahead, Greta. Number two. 
Okay, so number two, I had to get, it looks like I'm going to have to get a couple answers off my calculator because there's no way that I, oh, nope, that's not true. I factored one. And then, I, or I could have gotten it off my calculator. But I'm going to have to get something here off my calculator. And then just looking at my answers, I have no idea. If I take number two, it definitely factors because I have x to the fourth. As soon as I look at it, I see that I have an x in common. Okay, so I can factor an x out because I don't even know how to do synthetic division with a zero. So this is going to give me a zero. So I could pull that off my calculator and it's going to touch at zero, zero. And that's going to tell me that I could factor out an x. This doesn't look like it's going to factor because I'm going to have a 1 and an 8. And even if I factor a 2 out of here, I'm going to have an 11 and a 10. So I could take the whole thing and type it in. And I'm going to get a 0 and a something, clearly a 2. Or I could take this and type it in, and I'm just going to get a 2. It makes no difference. Okay, but either way, if I type this in, I get a 0 and a 2. If I type this part in, I'm just going to get a 2 because I've already pulled the 0 out. Does that make sense? So at this point, I just have a 2 left to pull out. If I know I got a 0 and a 2, um, I could not run synthetic division with a 0. That's the unfortunate part. That tells me I have to factor out an x. So I can run here. I can run the 2 because it doesn't factor. So if I do that, I can get down to my other answers because if I remember when I graphed it and somebody could graph it and check it for us, the other two did not touch. They were imaginary, clearly looking at my answers. So this gives me x squared minus 6x plus 10. And once I get you down to a quadratic, you're on your own because you are now really good at that. So from here, you can do whatever you want to. If I set this equal to zero, I know it doesn't factor because I've already seen on my calculator that it doesn't touch. Now you might not when we were talking about your test because you might not have a calculator. So then I'd have to look and say, okay, does it factor? Um, and then Greta, you have a choice. Do you want to complete the square? Do you want to run quadratic formula? What do you want to do? Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to move the 10 to the other side. Divide by 2 and square it means you're going to add 9. And it is confirmed that I'm about to take the square roots of a negative. And yes, it's imaginary. So I have x minus 3 is equal to plus and minus i. And all I'm going to do is add 3. And there's your other two answers. So 2 three, four, and it's degree four. It's a quartic equation. You've got all four of them. Nice. Okay. Anything else through 12? Okay, 15 and 16 were the two graphs. Uh, nope, 15 and 16 were the two at the bottom. We'll do the two graphs today. These were pretty much right off your quiz. <clears throat> Bless you. Top of the next page for you because I spaced them out. I ran, um, you could do substitution. Some of you are crazy with your substitution. Um, I ran synthetic division. And this one's still nuts. And again, if you put a value in, you're not giving me out negative 3x to the fourth minus blah, 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 blah. You're just giving me out that remainder. No different than if I plugged 4 in. So hopefully we've learned that lesson off of our quiz. If not, I guess you'll lose two more points on your test. Okay, 17 and 18. 
I skipped. Oh, we skipped 17. 18, we're going to do that one in class today. So 19 and 20 are here. Oops, sorry. Total calculator questions. Which one do we skip? Hold on, let me go back. Yeah, we started back at 19. You're right. I just have to look here. I have different ones circled. I have 19 through 38. Okay. That works for me. We can do them today. If you did 19 and 20, they're there. If not, we'll do them today. There's 21. And like 21 would be a no calculator question. It factors. So there's the other side of it. That one you don't need a calculator for. Well, it's a good thing because they're all imaginary. Even if I give you a calculator, that's a waste of time. 22, you're doing long division. Clearly, I fixed your 23 because mine came up all goofy when I printed it. And then 24 is the question that I like that I tell you one of the zeros and then I don't have to give you a calculator. So now I can take your calculator away because if there's three of them and I give you one, then you're down to a quadratic. Then you have other ways to find them. It factors, complete the square, quadratic formula, square root method. Clearly, if I give you a calculator, you're just going to find them. I would too. So I ran synthetic division, I'm sure. I'm just not making you get through all the work. And this starts to look a lot like your quiz, where you had to find answers. So these look like they factor. So these would be your no calculator questions. So we changed gears from the front page where you needed a calculator to now you don't need a calculator. Okay, the bottom, I believe, looked very similar to what you had on your first quiz. I don't know if it was your first or your second, but this was definitely on a quiz. I think it was your first quiz. If I remember correctly, part D, almost everybody missed because there were two answers. What's the input when the output is two? So when my output is 2, I'm getting these two points. I'm sorry. So I just estimated 4 and 8. So that's why I put various answers here. So you could have given me some decimals. I took lots of different solutions, even on the quiz. Go ahead, Tucker. So for this graph that you want us to put, like, say, 32, like, 6 to like, um, Where is it decreasing? There are no arrows. So I can't. If I wanted an arrow on there, I would draw it. So this is saying it stops at 15. Good point. If it means it, that it keeps going, then I got to communicate that to you. Great question.
me slide it back up for you. It's just the hole right there. There we go. Yeah, you could, in here, you could have said, like, here, where is it, what X value, and then here, you, this is what is the local minimum. If you had written 6.3 there, I wouldn't have marked it wrong. This is just asking you the height. Yes. That would have been fine with me. Especially if there's more than one. Absolutely. Okay, any questions on what we've done, things you want to do? Because I'm going to make sure we take care of those before we jump into the other questions. We are done with the unit, so ask now before we jump into the new stuff. Today I definitely want us to have a working class so that you get all your questions answered because you know next class I'm not going to answer any. I am here tomorrow after school, but I'd like for you to get as much done in class as we possibly can. So anything that we've done so far on the review that you have questions on. Okay, I have one that I'd like to do in class with you. It's a review question, but I'm afraid that it would be one that is just so far back that you might not remember it. And that's problem number 17 and 18. And then I'm going to let you finish the review. And if you're done, then I have another review for you to work on. So number 17 and number 18, we have done in the past. We just, we haven't done it. So this is that we haven't done it together. So this is that question that usually would appear as like that honors question that I wouldn't tell you about, that you have the tools to be able to do it, but um, we didn't do it explicitly in class. So this time we're going to kind of do it explicitly in class and see how you handle it. So this says write a cubic function in integral factored form, and I give you, you've seen this before, as a matter of fact, if I just cover that up, that's a quadratic. All I did was write a cubic, or I could write a quartic, or any degree I want to. These are just x-intercepts. What's different now, the only thing that's different is it's got many factors. And we're trying to find that vertical stretch. So you could use the one equation from, like we can't use vertex form, we can't use um, transformation form, we could use transformation form, but we can't use anything else for polynomials except intercept form and transformation form. So if I take this function and I want to find the cubic function, well all we have to do here is write the equation in intercept form. So if we take 17, I can say f of x, I can say y equals, I can say 0 because I don't want to lose my point for just not writing a function. I'm going to say y equals and I'm going to write these x-intercepts. Well, where's this one over here to the right? Where's this? So what's that factor? X minus one. And then this one's the hard one. I'm going to save it for last. What's this one? Negative two. So what's that factor? X plus two. And then this has to be one that I know. I mean, it's kind of awful that it's not marked, but it's got to be right in the middle for me to be able to do this. So if it's at negative one half, so I'm going to be better here, a better teacher, and I'm going to mark it, because otherwise I wouldn't know exactly where it was. What would that factor be? 2x plus 1. Now, the only thing that I don't know is what this a value is. And like I said, we've done this before, but with a quadratic. Well, we know how to find that a. As a matter of fact, we just have to pick any other point on this quadratic. Oh, it just came back. On this cubic... That's the glass from the past. And look at that. I put a nice little dot there. But you could technically pick any nice intersection point that isn't a x-intercept. So if I had another nice point, like I could pick that one. But I got to pick a nice point that I for sure can tell. Well, that one's beautiful. It even marked it for me. What is that point? 0, negative 2. I'm going to put negative 2 in for y. 
and zero in for x. And I can find a. I just gotta find that vertical stretch. So I have negative two equals a, zero minus one is negative one, zero plus two is two, two times zero, well that's beautiful, that's zero, plus one is one, and it looks like on this side I have negative two equals two times one times negative one, negative two a, oh well that one's just about as boring as it can be, because a is It's a parent function. Well, that's awful, but away we go. We plug it back in, and we're done. I'm going to put this back in and just say, well, I can put a 1 there. I don't have to. And we're done. So that's always the kind of question that I throw on there that something like that or anything from the past that you could use. Okay, let's try 18. This time I didn't give you a picture, but I gave you x-intercept. x-intercept, 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 random point. Oh, but I tried to be tricky because that's a y-intercept. Okay, so I got to write a function. I'll be fancy this time. I'll say f of x. I don't know, eh? What's my factor for one? Negative one. What's our factor for two? What's our factor for three? And plug in your other point. Go ahead, find your A. It's not one this time. We all get three over two. Plug it back in. Write your function. There's my answer. And there's always a question or two on every test that I pull something from the past or something I think you know how to do with all the things that we've done this unit. And that I think you could have handled without me doing it, but there you go. Okay, so I'm going to set a timer and let you go ahead and work through these other problems and then we're going to check them. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll pass out the second review. Some of you may have already picked it up during fourth period or during learning seminar, whatever. This is fourth period, but you know what I mean, fourth period learning seminar. So if you're done with this, you can work on the other one. I have the answers to the other one done as well. Um, and so we need to go back and do um, 13 and 14. And this is up to you if you feel like you need practice on local min, local mac, increasing and decreasing. That's up to you. If you feel like you don't need practice on those, then you don't have to do them. Okay? That's completely up to you. These are different graphs, though, so I'd like for you to do them because they have points of inflection, points of tangency. But this is up to you, whether you want to do local min, local max, your choice. Okay? If you'd rather spend your time on something else, that's fine with me for both of these. The rest of it I think you can do without a calculator because they're all factored. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and finish this. All the way to 48. Okay, so I'm going to set a timer for uh, about 15 minutes. And we're going to check this first page, 13 and 14.
because I want to make sure we're having time to answer questions. Yeah, go ahead. If you get done with these two, keep going. I would like for you to stay where you're seated because I think you stay a little bit more focused that way. Set like this, mm -hmm. like with the x minus one. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do anything to that? Yes, because you know that that is not just an intersection point. What does it mean if that's odd? It's a triple root, so something special happens at that oh, graph. Point of agency? And that would be if it's even. Oh, so point of inflection. Yes, you have to draw me a point of inflection there. Okay, but okay. I, don't, I don't need to do anything for it to be like to know like the like. All the stuff besides grabbing it. Right, you, right. You have to do all this. Yeah, but I right, but you just it doesn't factor. That's basically right, right. It doesn't factor. I've already factored it for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Trying to do a problem. This is your time to get as much done off of the review that you can. Best foot forward. It won't let you. Does it say it's full? We're not in the first 10 minutes of class, though. 8 10 to 8 20. That's so weird. Okay. Take it to pass and go. I'll make you a pass. Go ahead and go. Because it should only be the first 10 minutes of class. Go ahead and go. I'll, I'll create one for you. Let me take attendance and I will do that.
Yeah, I will make one for you. She was having the same problem. Yep. I have a question. Yep. So I have this going down up because this is cute. Do I have do I have to take all the zeros? All, I mean, all you the can only touch at negative one, at positive one, and negative three. So you can't touch here. Even though it's a line, you said? The y-intercept can't be 0, 0 if it's not also an x-intercept. So if I put in 0 here, I get negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. And if I put it in here, I get 3. So my y-intercept is at negative 3. Oh, okay. But my question is more along the lines of... Go ahead. Since this is, this is the leading coefficient... So is positive. It's positive. Right. So and that means that it's, it's odd. It's even because that's three plus one is okay, four. Okay. So you add you add them. Yep. And you wrote that here. You got that four. Yeah. I just I I was thinking more because with the one it's like in standard form. Yep. I, it's just the leading coefficient. Yep. So but here you that. add them because you've got three of these and one of these. Okay. So this counts as three solutions, this counts as one solution, so you get four of them. So they both have to be going up. Okay, that makes sense. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yep. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is, how do I factor that to get the y-intercept? Well, it is factored. So I would just plug in that x is 0, so if I put 0 in here, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is still negative 1. 
0 plus 3 is 3, so negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Oh, okay. Just plug it in. Okay. Then another one. So this, no, because I have to take 2 plus and minus 3i and set it equal to x. And then I have to subtract the 2. You saw me do it. Plus and minus 3i. Now when I square both sides, you have to FOIL that. Okay. This is only oh, going to give you... No, it's only going to give you... Oh, yeah, I got you. I see what you did. Do you have to keep the first place? I tried redoing the bonus. Yep, I can go back and get it. Give me a second. Do you want to do how to get like the i root 7 again? Yes. I... Which one? Negative i. Yes. So here, you set it equal to x. So you're going to have plus and minus. So x is equal to plus and minus. And then you're going to square both sides because you know it's a quadratic. So you're going to have x squared equals, when you square this, it's positive, i squared. And what squared is 7 squared? 7. Forgetting the factor. I'm not done yet, but I'm close. Because I know that it's going to be a quadratic. So I took x and I set it equal to those two factors. Okay. Then I squared x squared. Because there's two of them there. So when I square the plus and minus, they're both plus. I squared. Which is I squared, because I'm going to fix that. Square roots of 7 squared, these two cancel out, and I get 7. What's I squared equal to? Negative 1. So negative 1 times 7, x squared is equal to negative 7. Exactly, there's your, there's your actor. So just before I would just be x squared minus x squared minus so this one it would be x squared equals plus and minus 4i and do the same thing every time x squared equals whatever that mess is square both sides do your thing every time yep square the 4 so 16 i squared Okay, I need you to go back to your seat. I don't want you up here. That's not a problem. He's off task when you're with him. Just negative six. So it'd be x squared plus sixteen. Exactly. What you need? For this one, so this is like over three. Do I have to put like multiplicity of three? Sure. And then when you graph it, it should have a triple root. Yeah. Like wait, when I graph it, it should have a point of inflection. Okay. Yep. So wait, should I like? Is the concavity changing there? Uh, no. It should. It should be going from either concave down or concave up. That's the whole point of a point of inflection. Okay, less conversations, quiet time, you're working on your own. You need to focus. If you're not doing your best right now, then you're not ever going to be eligible for a retake. No private conversations unless they're about math. That's why I want you working by yourself because you need to know what you know and then get help. That's where things need to start changing. This isn't free time. Go ahead. I don't care because you're not going to know that because you're not going to have a calculator as long as you're hitting your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts and you don't go over the curvature I'm good as long as you don't go over the number of possible times on the day before a test you should be so focused that you are working through your review today is not the day for you not to be doing what you're supposed to be doing Go ahead now. Um, multiply two with two. Cause right, you just have to square it. Yes. Okay. And so that would give you four. Okay. And then when you get four, then you take the opposite. So you get negative four. Okay. Yeah. Times whatever this is, negative one. So it's not negative two squared. Oh. It's not negative two. It's four squared. Then take the opposite. Okay. That negative's out front. Okay. <laughs>
You are pushing it today. If you need to go sit in the back by yourself, you can. That's our timer. But you can go sit in the back because you are not putting your best foot forward today. Um, so if there's a radical, so do I just put this? Nope, we said x equal to that plus and minus. Um, and, then, and then we figure out what the factors are. That is not an okay. integer. Yep. Okay, let's check these two graphs. They should be done in 15 minutes. Or you are going to struggle on your test. So if you don't have those two graphs done, you are not putting your best foot forward. Okay, so you may not have done mins and maxes. I'm fine with that. Or the range, because you would need the calculator for that. So go ahead and check 13. That means you are wasting my time, and you will not waste my time after school to come and take a retake if you are wasting my time now. So this one is unique because you have that point of inflection. So you should see concavity change there from either concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. But that's why we just did this problem as review because you should see a concavity change. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Just positive is fine. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to always ask you positive or negative. Okay. For the next one, it also had a unique situation, which is why I gave you these two graphs. They weren't just random. Here, because it's an even you have a point of tangency there. Good vocabulary words. Point of tangency, point of inflection. And again, you may not have found the mins and maxes because I said you didn't have to. Especially if you're comfortable with your calculator. If you're not, then there's the answers. So you could call this a double root. You could call it a point of tangency. But either way, it should bounce. And you should be checking your graphs. Some of the graphs that came up here, you are touching the x-axis in more places than you have x-intercepts. And then your graph is wrong. There's nothing I can do with that. Put your phone away. You're sitting right in front of me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think it's going to come up. Are you trying to go to the bathroom? Just go. I'll have to write you one. For some reason, it's blocked. Okay, any questions on those two? Okay, I'm going to set the timer again, and we should now be through. We should have do 19 and 20 if you haven't already done so. And we should be working past 38. So we should be on 39, 40 through the end. And if you finish this, then I gave you the second review. So in about 15 minutes, I'm going to finish checking this part of the review. And we can work towards the next page, the next handout. Go ahead, Tucker. Absolutely. And again, if you're not using my time correctly, I will not give you extra time of mine. So if I have to say something to second review on Schoology for you, but I have it done, so I'm happy to take any questions if you've started it and I will post it today okay so 19 and 20 you may or may not have done them because they were calculator if you're feeling comfortable with your calculator that's up to you And then we picked back up over here with 40, where you're writing the equations, nice transformation, things that we've done in the past.
Okay, can a function with the complex roots 5 square root of 2 and 3i be a 4, 3 polynomial? Of course, no, because if it's got square root of 2, it has to have negative square root of 2. And if it's got 3i, it has to have negative 3i. So that has to be at least five answers. So it has to be at least a degree five. Okay, for this one, a cubic box is five inches on each side. If each dimension is increased by x, so that becomes x plus five, what is the polynomial function of the volume? So volume is length times width times height. That's easy, that's an SOL question for those of you that are gonna take the SOL. Didn't even have to do anything with it. Just had to write the equation. Okay. Oh, and actually I think I took that one off because it was so easy, sorry. Okay, 43 and 44, or 46 and 40, or this is now your 43, I think. Yep, sorry, I've renumbered them because I think that question was so easy that I took it off. Um, so 43 and 44. Here, I can renumber them to match yours. 43, and this is 44. This one I had omitted up here. And this is just a parent function. You can see I made a table of values. I'm going to memorize it for like 10 minutes. Not one that I think I need to know forever. Tucker, you had a question. Did I get it? Or are you telling me? Okay. Okay, this one is your 45. And 46. Forty-seven, and then your forty-eight. And forty-eight's really good because it's kind of got everything. So it's got the horizontal with the double parentheses, the vertical, you name it, it's happening. Okay, anything off of the review that's in your packet? Okay, we still have seven minutes. I expect you to still be working because you still want to do everything you can to ask me questions. And I have the answers to the next piece. I'm going to post them on Schoology while you're working on some questions to see if you have anything. You're welcome to look through and see where you feel like you are the most uncomfortable. And I will go ahead and post this on Schoology right now. So I'll put it under Unit 4, Additional Review Answers. So you can look these up if you want to. You can work on the first page if you want. I'll leave this sit here and I'm going to post them right now. I know some of you have already started working on this during um, learning seminar the other day. Go ahead. So over here, um, I got minus uh, 64 over x plus 3. Mm -hmm. So for the solution, should I put negative 64 or just 64? Um, it would be negative 64. Yep. And I can see if I agree with you. What number is that? Uh, 25. 25. Um, I do not agree with you. I got 146. Do you want to just see my work to see if I agree? See what we disagree on?
you put in your zero. Oh yeah, that's that's the only, that's where everything, that's where everything changes. There you go. Just make sure that's right. So when you're go asking ahead. to evaluate at like a point, yep. it's just the remainder. It's just the, the remainder. Yeah. And then when you find the quotient, it's the entire thing. It's the entire thing. Yeah. Because the quotient just means what's yeah, the division. So like same thing with this one. It would just be the remainder. It would just be the remainder. Yep. Okay. If you need to see a particular question, let me know. I'm happy to put it up.